Welcome to the second Stock Investing Roundtable with Obermott. I'm its CEO and I developed the Obermott method that we will use today to pick and discuss stocks. I have here from last week Anand and I have two new members, Ori and Tommy, who mm -hmm. will with us discuss their own stock investing ideas. Uh, hello, my name is Tommy. I work as a contractor right now for a large insurance company. Studied mathematics originally. I'm here because I'm interested in learning more about stock investment, given that uh, retirement will come up at some point in the future. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Hello, hi, I'm Anand. Uh, I'm a software engineer. And uh, we, uh, as I said, uh, they're doing the meeting, I work on uh, delivery drones. So I'm also an investor and uh, I'm always uh, uh, finding companies with values. So today we are here to discuss stocks and uh, I'm super excited to see what are the stocks uh, that we are going to discuss and uh, uh, what, what's the outcome. And uh, I'm super glad to learn a lot of uh, new stocks and uh, like different perspectives during this event. My name is Oli, I'm 30 years old and I've been in Switzerland for six years, originally from London. Um, I work in the semiconductor industry as a software developer and I'm here taking part because I wanted to learn how to get started with stocks and uh, basically provide a better future for myself. So let's get going. Every one of us has prepared one stock that they like based on the Obermott ranks and based, of course, on other information. And we start today with Anand because he's been with us last time and has already some experience. Anand, do you want to mm -hmm. go ahead? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, so for this week, I really wanted to have a stock with a safety margin. Uh, so the first thing what I looked at is uh, to have a high safety rank in Obermott. And then the second part is that um, sector, well, there were a lot of stocks uh, that are good in uh, uh, safety as well. And then I, so I want to filter this list with uh, uh, the sector that I like or that I want. So basically the sector I chose for this week is asset management. The reason I chose them is uh, mainly because they have a lot of um, free cash flow in general. Uh, compared to other company and they have low working capital in progress. So for this reason, I bottled down to two stocks which are wantable. They are really like an asset management company. Uh, uh, yeah, and they are quite well known over the years. Yeah. Where are they? What country? They are from Switzerland. From Switzerland. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's called Wantable Holding. V-O-N-T-O-B-E-L. Ah, yeah. Wantable Holding. Okay. And then uh, the second company is a most well-known company, which is Swissquote. Swissquote, yeah. Swissquote. So they are slightly in a different sector of asset management where they provide services for uh, financial uh, institutions and for individuals. Uh, I feel that's a very interesting business where they are completely face themselves in an IT domain, but they provide services for investors. And uh, I believe that in the future, there'll be a lot more active investors. And uh, this is one reason I think uh, Swiss code is quite interesting to me. So, so they, they provide uh, uh, trading services. Uh, basically, you can buy stocks uh, or sell stocks with them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are they focused on anything particular or everything goes? They, they are open in quite a lot of markets. They are in debt market, they are in equity market, they provide ETF, they provide funds. They are quite a lot of uh, investment products in general. But it's all with the face theme of investment. It's Swiss called this um, as a discount broker in Switzerland. So it was one of the first discount brokers, mm -hmm. and the services they have now is online brokerage, where which they are pretty good at. But they have also some um, asset management, as you said, some digital asset management, exactly. um, where um, robo advisor, you know, with a robo advisor mm -hmm. basically mm -hmm. approach, mm -hmm. where people just can put in the money, pay fifty basis points, I think, and Swiss Code manages the money for you. Mm -hmm. One of the cli largest clients is actually Postfinance. Which, oh, okay. which is using the same platform from Swissquote. And you basically like Swissquote because if it's good safety rank, on, you know, mm -hmm. overall it's 89. Mm -hmm. It has a, a pretty good value rank as, rank as well, mm -hmm. not in terms of sales and profits. And they provide a good return, dividend return as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
they have been suffering growth recently, huh? 2019. Yeah, the yeah. The growth has not been that. Yeah, I think it's also about the market that uh, there is the economic slowdown and the other factors that are slowly facing up. Yeah, good. So that's your decision, Anand. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Yeah. Um, does anybody of you want to introduce your own decision? You want to go? Yeah, I can go next. Um, so I'm kind of new to looking at my own stocks and things. So it was rather interesting to actually see what the algorithms from the Obermatt um, uh, system presents to you. And I was kind of surprised um, to see some of the names up there that I wasn't expecting to be classed as a good investment or a wise investment. Um, and they have some quite high combined rates and things. Um, first, I sort of sat down and thought, what is important and what's going to become big over the next few generations? And I think probably the biggest thing is climate change at the moment. So I thought something to do with reduction of CO2. And then that sort of made me think maybe rail, because that's probably going to take off, especially within Europe, um, with the decline of, well, air, I suppose. And then I started thinking about, well, maybe renewable energy might be a good idea to look into. So I just looked generally, and then I used one of these um, select focus filters, um, where there's a specific one for um, CO2 leaders in various different um, areas. So I put in technology, transport and industry, um, big companies focusing on CO2. So after applying the different focuses and the different select, um, sectors that I looked at, um, I got quite a large list of primarily heavy industrial machinery companies. Mm -hmm. um, one I kind of liked the look, look of was um, Alstom, the train manufacturer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, they're based in France and they're a very large company. Um, and the second that I found was a wind company based in Denmark called Vestas Wind. Mm. Um, and uh, I had a look at their two websites. And for me, I think Vestas sort of business morals and the way they present themselves and looking through the news, um, I think that was my favorite. Um, they're... Uh, well, they say themselves that they're one of the largest, or I think the largest, um, wind turbine manufacturer. Um, and they have 17% of the globally installed base of, um, of wind turbines. Mm -hmm. um, and like most stocks, they've had a dip in the last few years, but they've risen back out and they're pretty much as high as they've ever been at the moment. Um, the largest peak was in 2009. Um, but in terms of performance, it's essentially positive. And I think for me, they look like a fairly safe bet. And then when I cross-referenced that with the metrics that are um, on the Overmat system, um, everything is fairly green. The one thing I was a bit confused about was the price versus capital being so low at only six points. Um, and also their growth has shown not as shown as quite low and I'm presuming also refinancing they scored very low but I'm presuming that's probably because they've had a lot of government subsidiaries mm -hmm. um, okay. in the last few years and that's slowly being phased out so I think that's probably the reason why so I think for me despite it being a techie company and I know tech companies can be hit and miss I think because of the way that the future looks, and I think CO2 is going to be a big thing, um, I think this is where I'm going to start. Yeah. Uh, those, the ones is also building a wind farm in mm -hmm. the Danish sea. Yeah, the floating wind farm. Yeah. 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 It's actually quite surprising that a company that is in wind energy has such a good value rank, you know. Normally, companies that exactly. have a great future are expensive. Uh -huh. and here, you have a company that is um, quite well priced, also good dividends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, Vistas is like a definitely well-known company. Like anyone in the aerodynamics are like a really in Vistas. They are like pioneers in uh, making the wind windmill, mm -hmm. the wind blade, and a yeah. lot of things. So, so in eye level, you believe that. Uh, 
despite the fact that the coal or oil is getting cheaper or not getting cheaper is cheaper mm-hmm. uh, the uh, there will be lot of emphasis on the wind energy yes i think hydro is probably a bigger area but it didn't come up in my search and i thought wind you know what why not mm-hmm. um but i think moving away from fossil fuels is a very big topic at the moment mm-hmm. um, particularly mm-hmm. in the last probably 6 months to a year yeah yeah with yeah with all these climate pushes and you know don't fly and use renewables and i mean everything's going in the direction of renewables and i think mm-hmm. yeah, yeah interesting yeah. yeah i also like the alternative energy companies i looked at that last time as well mm-hmm. so it makes sense they have a lot to build yeah interesting okay what are you um are you out of question? curiosity yeah i have a, i saw here on your list this one why not Uh Mr. I did look at Metso. Um but from the motherland <laughs> from Finland true. Um I can't remember. I think it was because it wasn't so much about renewables. Um they do a lot of recycling stuff. Yes. Um, you know it renewables not so much for us I know. It w- it was on my list. I had a list of about 15 and kind of narrowing it down to the one I wanted to talk yeah. about today was <laughs> was actually quite mm-hmm. hard. Mm-hmm. Um For me uh, I approach it also mainly based on this being the first time I went for the big ones just extra large and extra extra large companies also touched it a little bit came from because there's so much right so you have to start narrowing it down mm-hmm. from somewhere and I think I read last week something about uh regarding the st microelectronics mm-hmm. re- uh sense all of these sensors and everything is moving to a more digitalized way including smart houses and, and well everything really uh so i figured the investing in semiconductors even though now it's overstock what i've read Mm-hmm. in the market but if we're thinking about 10 years in the future then that area will inevitably grow mm-hmm. unless somebody comes up with new technology or start or finds a way to renew all the electronics in a more cost efficient way but at least at the time being and they have a pretty solid values according to the obermatt rankings uh, they're also in the top 10 stock picks uh top 10 focus incentives looks pretty good they have a fairly good dividend but uh, one of the things that really really caught my attention or was that kind of dot on the eye if you will mm-hmm. is that i read up on the their executives Okay. and their CEOs has been working for that company for 30 some years and uh, through some really really tough times so obviously I mean it, it's a captain of the ship so whatever mm-hmm. comes they will probably come through so in that sense given that you know there was limited time this time around and still learning but uh, in terms of just getting something somewhere where there's a clear need in the future while being being a fairly stable company mm-hmm. or at least on the look of look of it mm-hmm. then that would be a good way to start there's also pretty big so so that would be kind of a mm-hmm. not too much of a risk and the volatility will be what it will be okay i also had another one but if you want to comment on this one first thoughts Mm-hmm. Yeah so I I always believe uh, the future will be driven by semiconductor based industry such as IoT autonomous car whatever wherever there is artificial intelligence uh, everything there needs a uh, presence of semiconductor or computing engine yeah whether it is a cloud technology to anything to a laptop um but um, one thing what I am thinking about is they make um, especially sensors Mm-hmm. So, so I'm not sure the they are definitely pioneers in the field but um, at the current moment where the computing is highly focused on uh, like of course sensing is also focused but the computing uh, with a uh, lot of people coming from uh, 
uh, the data centers to the cloud technology, mm. perhaps uh, the field of uh, GPU or uh, even to some extent CPU. Mm. I'm, I'm thinking that would be having a faster growth in the near term mm. rather than more particular sensing sector where ST microelectronics is super expertised in. But wouldn't these sensors also go into the whole uh, electronic car market? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Which, okay, it's still in baby phase yeah. or uh -huh. child phase where, I don't know, the car market in, in depth. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. whenever, it's in, whenever that involves, it will automatically also require development in that field. Mm -hmm. And the Internet of Things as well, right? When things get more automated, they have to know their environment, you know, they mm -hmm. have to... Yeah, the temperature or whatever humidity or exactly. If yeah, you go into robotics in any industry, you're yeah, probably going to need it. So mm -hmm. sensor. My, my my son just bought a, um, one of the drones, you know, and that uh, drone has really good yeah. sensors. You yeah, know, yeah. You yeah. Can't crash <laughs> it's unbelievable. Yeah. It's unbelievable. You know, yeah, so yeah, you yeah. fly it into a house, you know, and just stops before. And yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. amazing. You know, with 70 kilometers, it's going to stop. Yeah, so and I work on that. Delivery drones. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I know you do. I so know you need you lots do, of so. sensors. I guess yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. cool enough for you yeah. because the, yeah, it's the intelligence is for more important. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, exactly. Maybe we'll need to have an in-depth discussion where this is heading. So. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I think you're definitely right, though, that the way that technology is headed, t machines need to know what they're doing and where they are mm -hmm. and how to react to things. And by chance, I work in exactly this industry. That's a competitor of the company I work for. Um, <laughs> but and what do you think about them? Um, well, there are very good competitors. <laughs> okay. um, but yours is better. But of course we're better. <laughs> okay. You can't um, name drop it now, though. No, I shan't. But that's a good sign, Anand. You know, I, I know about the fund manager. What he would do is he would go to companies and he would ask them what their toughest competitors are mm -hmm. and uh -huh. then buy those companies. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So you say it's a good competitor, huh? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're developing a lot of things, things that we don't, do um, so they're not a direct competitor of us in all areas, but um, especially in the automotive sector, okay. there's a lot of new development. Good. So what I did is something else. I didn't search for the stocks. I looked at my portfolio because I bought now stocks for four years, five years, five years actually, mm -hmm. and I, you know, some of them actually dropped, and they're now in a small amount in my portfolio, mm -hmm. and I have to you know, think about should I sell them or should I keep them. And I, you know, every stock that was below um, 5,000 Swiss francs or, or 4,000 um, euro roughly, um, I, um, I listed in my, in my watch list, in my own watch list, my account. And what I found is that I have quite a few steel companies uh, already invested. Um, and I wondered, uh, steel actually got really a bashing recently mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. for some mm -hmm. reasons the steel mm -hmm. prices collapsed probably because the economy is slowing down mm -hmm. the chinese are really cheap you know that's the reason and even though the steel companies were cheap a couple of years ago they're still cheap even cheaper now um and because i had already these, these steel companies i looked at my the mix of my portfolio which you can do with the excel sheet that we have online and i found that uh, I, I have in steel, I have, I have really a lot in, in raw materials, I have 15%. It's, it's really almost, you know, the biggest cake that I have mm -hmm. here, you know. Mm -hmm. like, industrials is more, but that's much more diversified than, you know, the raw materials. And I, I, I thought I want to look at uh, another company that is in the service sectors, because in the service sector, I only have 6.7%. And actually, the reality is, we are a service economy, so there's a lot mm -hmm. more services than raw materials these mm -hmm. days. And I have a stock that uh, I bought a couple of years ago, but I erred on the on the price. You know, it was quoted in in pounds, in pounds, cents, <laughs> so it's in pence, basically. That they do that in <laughs> London. I had to learn that. So I I I, I bought a hundred times. You know, not enough. You know, <laughs> too little, too few stocks. And now. This company, uh, G4S, is really a tiny, you know, little bit in my portfolio. I looked at it. It has, it has actually a value rank of 59, so that's quite decent, especially its dividend yield, uh, G4S. It's just G4, mm -hmm. four, number four, actually, S, you mm -hmm. find it on. Uh, price to capital is decent. Price to revenues is actually quite good, uh, 73. And 
it is a service company. What they do is they protect people. You know, they have border protection. Uh, and they had a big scandal, actually, in the, in the London Olympics. Uh, mm. 2012. Yeah, yeah. Yes. That's something, no. uh -huh. Uh -huh. And they, they still seem to suffer from that for some reason. Uh -huh. So we have two things, you know, a company with a bad reputation and a country with a bad reputation these days, Britain, yeah. basically, uh, which makes this stock really cheap. Um, and on the other hand, I think uh, defense, you know, or basically services, what I found on Wikipedia, really, it's, they have 570,000 employees. They're the fourth largest company worldwide. And it's unbelievable. It's a huge stock uh, in terms of people that they employ. I really think it's a good company. It has a, a decent value rank. What I do is also I have a, a subscription with the Financial Times, so it's really good to go there. Uh, where you have, If you have a subscription anywhere with a paid newspaper, sometimes they cover stocks and they give you some background. And I went to the FT and, F, FT and what I found, August 27, stocks to watch, uh, actually there is, it actually pops out, um, that RBC, Royal Bank of Canada, which is a really good bank, my friend works there actually, <laughs> it's a really blue chip of a bank, upgraded G4S from sector perform to outperform, which means that they, they think it's a good company, but they have a little bit the same, or maybe I have it from there, the same opinion. We are not huge fans of the company as is, but trading is fine, currency is in favor, and the recent weakness has left the shares trading at 15% discount to our sum of the parts valuation. Probably the investors around are looking not just on the valuation, it's about the credibility of the company, the uh, trust that the company will work for the investors on behalf of investor is like, uh, I think it's quite important. Yeah. Probably. What I, what I saw though is that two of the board members retired, so uh -huh. they actually change. Okay, okay. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I like bad news, you know, because it means the stock yeah. prices are suppressed, you know. Yeah. But sometimes it could be like catching a falling knife. <laughs> so, so it's it's a bit risky, but uh, it could. Well, do... RBC, I respect RBC, and they say uh, yeah. outperform, and I think things actually revert back to normal. It's a little bit the philosophy of our, our value rank. You know, you said before that you were surprised what companies come up there mm -hmm. as good companies. These are actually only companies that are cheap. Doesn't mean that they're good. Yeah. It's just a, it's a big difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you, what you get is that companies that happen to be cheap compared to their size. It doesn't mean that they're good companies. Mm -hmm. And in that respect, you know, G4S definitely has a lot of bad news and I've prepared that already for last table and I didn't bring it up because I was not so secure about it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now I bring it up because I thought um, I need another stock and this is the mm -hmm. one that makes more sense in my case. And do you think a stock trading in England is still a wise investment at this point in time? <laughs> It, so actually, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter where the stock is traded. Uh, I'm sure that it's actually traded on other stock exchanges too. Probably, yeah. So but the headquarter also doesn't matter much. You know, we have a company, Nestle, where only 2% of their revenues are made in Switzerland. So mm -hmm. you, you could call it a, a Swiss stock, but it isn't a Swiss stock. Mm -hmm. You know, Apple isn't an American company because their revenues and their production is all abroad. You know, I mean, of course, mm -hmm. a significant part is in the US, but these are very, very international companies traded in many different stock exchanges. You don't have currency risk because the revenues are in other currencies. Mm -hmm. So I don't have a British currency risk here. If the, the pound depreciates, it means the stock price is going to appreciate. It's going to compensate that because they have revenues from outside. Mm -hmm. So I'm not so worried about that, okay. honestly. And I'm also not so worried that the Brexit story will end as bad as it does, you know, especially since we are in Switzerland or outside the in European Union as well, in a, in a very similar um, state than as, as the UK would like to be. So, and, and we don't have a problem, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we all um, made a decision. Uh, why don't we wrap up? We heard other stocks. Maybe that changes our mind. Um, the last round is basically, you know, to tell us what you decide after and to do, basically, mm -hmm. where to invest after this round table. Who would like to start? Okay, I could go first. Okay. So, so yeah. So, we have uh, mainly four companies. One for, uh, just to recap, I have um, um, Swiss Coat, you have Vistas, and... Uh, ST Microelectronics. Yeah, ST Microelectronics and G4S. Uh, so, in terms of uh, Vistas, uh, I know it's a quite nice company and uh, 
Oh, so ST electronics. So just uh, to think about, uh, just to pass on my thought process, uh, I feel uh, still the cloud computing business, uh, for example, AWS is going, Google Cloud Computing is going, and uh, uh, Microsoft Azure is going. This means uh, probably their data centers are going. Vistas, uh, I think I should have a look more into it. And um, G4S, uh, yeah, it's quite interesting to uh, to play with the stock market so it's a really uh, interesting play but still uh, just by quickly browsing it seems like they have debt to equity of about 5.31 uh, so i would stick with swiss court uh, being the current current uh, situation where they have not much of risk uh, because their income comes from trading and then the traders are fairly regular uh, and even if the market falls, they are more keen in selling and buying stocks. So the trade, uh, like if the market is quite volatile, they get much more revenue as well. And if the market is much more stable uh, in a recession phase or something, then there will be like uh, investors who are making the market moving. So uh, I feel that they have a bit of safety margin for the near term. I almost entirely discounted anything in England because <laughs> <laughs> just of recent of, I'm English as well for those who hadn't guessed um, so I think I might look for next time um, a bit more broadly than just <laughs> mainland Europe I like the idea of um, investing more in technology companies generally but I I'd always assume that they were a very mm -hmm. volatile area to invest in because and you have like you know the next big thing and then mm -hmm. it happens and then it's gone mm -hmm. um, so I'm I'm probably gonna expand my search as well into that area a bit mm -hmm. um, and I don't really know any <laughs> I hadn't even thought about investing in something that is itself working in the field of investment <laughs> it's quite and yeah. your point that you just made when you're in your summary mm -hmm. is actually a, a very good point mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. they sort of regulate themselves in a way yeah. So if the stocks are performing badly, they're going to make themselves perform better, mm -hmm, which is mm -hmm. actually a really clever idea. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and I think I'm I'm going to invest in Vesta. I'm going to stick with my decision, um, but I think for next time, my learning outcome is I'm just going to search a bit broader than I was this time. Mm -hmm. Perhaps I will stay away from asset management now. First of all, I don't know the dynamics well enough, and also mean that effect if i wanted stability i would probably go with some form of fund uh, instead of going with the company itself uh, but it's only because i don't know the dynamics but that i at least understand um, then i will take a look at the vestas and i will also take a look at mezzo <laughs> because now i'm much more interested in actually what they do now that we're doing this and we're actually, you know, you hear others' opinions and and how how you guys came up to your decisions. And also because, you know, you guys are experts or at least working in different fields and I have much more knowledge about that field. So it's interesting to hear it, okay, from what my first thoughts are looking at the stock compared to what the view is from inside the market itself. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, I will take a look at uh, also more on the on sensors. Mm -hmm. uh, regarding JG 4S, I will put it on my wish list because uh, looking at the values, it looks not so good, at least according to the metrics. But to your point, given that everything will also move towards like security will be is becoming a more and more of a of a issue worldwide uh, so they probably have a lot more capacity to grow than the metrics actually show and it would be interesting to see if they can now just feather the storm which is now so what do you think is your decision for today? My decision I will, is that I will st stick with my first option and go with ST Microelectronics. I will, however, also look into uh, to your arguments against mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. uh, but given that it's 
everything looks pretty stable and it's at least okay it might not be the most growing or the most uh, profitable mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. all the competitors and the options but at, mm -hmm. at least based on the research research i have and just to get started at least to to have a first touch then i will stay with that and it's still on a 10 15 year old on a length lifetime so i think it's mm -hmm. a pretty solid mm -hmm way to dip your toe into the into this thank you thank you Tommy. so it's uh, up to me um i'm not gonna invest in g4s so I, I overlooked that with the leverage mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the uh, the leverage value rank is actually really low uh, at g4s and uh, now you know a recession coming up um uh, more difficult me. times mm -hmm. um uh, or the risk of a recession, uh, you don't want to invest in a company that has not so solid financing. Mm -hmm. I will also not invest in in uh, um, Swiss Code because it's primarily a brokerage and they have a really tough competitive environment. I know that very well because I have to write about that every day. And <laughs> in Switzerland, uh, there are probably about five similarly priced brokers and there is an American one, in, um, Interactive Brokers, Mm -hmm. that just you know charges a tenth of yeah. those mm -hmm. five cheap Swiss mm -hmm. brokers. So it's a really tough environment. Having said that, I know it's one of the big Swiss success stories. It was founded in the 90s, you know, and uh, the only independent one basically so far. So it's a nice company, I must say, but I'm not buying it because the comp competition is too tough. Mm -hmm. uh, I like your the stock, the wind stock. Mm -hmm. I think I put I will put that on the wish list. Mm -hmm. And I really like ST Micro Electronics because it's so cheap right now. And uh, because it is so cheap, it didn't really grow a lot uh, last year. For that reason, it, it was it is probably so cheap, so they may have some kind of issue, I would guess. But uh, I think sensors are everything. Uh, this is really a big market. And I've actually learned on, on sometimes the low margin, stupid products are not yeah. necessarily, you know, less able to generate value than the high-end products like the, the chips, you know, mm -hmm. the microchips. Um, so if my decision is this, I'm not going to buy more of G4S. Maybe I'm going to sell it actually at this point. Uh, maybe look at that again when the numbers look better. Uh, but I'm probably going to buy ST Microelectronics. It's my decision. <laughs> so, so I think this is it for the time being. We all made our decisions. I think I close at this time. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you, Tommy, Ori, Anand. Thank you. For yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hope we have it soon again. And so these were our investing decisions, and we wish you good luck with your investing decision. <laughs>